Welcome back to AM Agenda. I'm Ashley Gillen in Canberra. Well, it's a pretty grim day for retirees. New figures show superannuation funds have delivered their worst returns in 16 years. On top of that, more than $20 billion worth of investment funds have now been frozen in a bid to stop money being transferred into banks that are covered by the government's deposit guarantee. Unfortunately, the Treasurer says there's no quick fix. There are no instant solutions. What we're dealing with here are market-linked investments. Uh, what we are dealing with with the bank guarantee are people with deposits in the bank. So that the, the investment is entirely different from a bank deposit. But the government understands the hardship that people are going through. We are working with the industry as assiduously as we possibly can to see what appropriate steps can be taken. But the most important thing for all Australians to concentrate on is that the core of the financial system through the banking guarantee is secured. I think most Australians are still scratching their heads, myself included, trying to work out how you could make such a momentous decision without talking directly to the Reserve Bank, which after all is the, of all of the uh, agencies involved in this area, is the one that is most expert and most aware of what's happening in markets. Let's go straight to our panel now. Joining me in Sydney, the Labor backbencher Craig Thompson and Liberal backbencher Michael Johnson. Thank you both for your time. Craig, firstly to you, are your constituents putting pressure on you over this bank deposit scheme? The Treasurer says he won't extend the guarantee to investment funds, but there don't seem to be too many other options floating around. Well, look, we're, we're, we're talking, uh, Treasury's talking uh, to the industry at the moment. Uh, what what uh, uh, people are telling me in Dobell is that they've been very happy and satisfied that the government's acted decisively in terms of its uh, its bank deposit guarantee that was there. That was what was worrying most of um, my constituents in terms of their, their money in the bank, and they're very assured with the uh, the steps that we took there. Uh, in, in terms of uh, the, 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 the other area, then we're working with the industry at the moment uh, with that and, uh, and having discussions. The best thing though that can happen for people in superannuation companies is the 10.4 million dollar uh, uh, financial stimulus though that's a package that's there to help stimulate the, the economy get the share market going again and uh, that's a, a vital uh, part of uh, the government strategy Michael Johnson, your leader, Malcolm Turnbull, has been quick to label the government's handling of this scenario as a, a, a blunder, but Malcolm Turnbull doesn't seem to have any solutions to this either. Oh, Malcolm's got lots of solutions. <laughs> he just changes I, I, I think Craig, is, I, I think Craig uh, actually was asking me that question. Look, uh, can I say, first of all, let me just correct uh, Craig. I think it was $10.4 billion yes. uh, of uh, Howard uh, Costello surplus <laughs> that was pumped into the, elect into the electorate. But uh, look, Ashley, uh, the... The, the situation at the moment in the Australian economy really is, uh, is a great challenge to our leadership on both sides of the parliament. Uh, I think that uh, the Prime Minister should really be including Malcolm Turnbull uh, in this. He should really be uh, bringing him into, a, into the debate and discussions. We've seen how really his inexperience has led to effectively uh, a run on a very important part of the Australian uh, financial system and that is these other uh, these other non-banking institutions. Can I just say that the, the Australian financial system is not just the banks, uh, and that's why the depositors of mums and dads, as well as significant retirees, is very, very important, and we've got to protect those, uh, those investments. Well, Craig Thompson, a senior's lobby group is now calling on these investment funds to unlock these savings to people who can prove that they have some sort of emergency, medical emergencies or something they need to pay for. Do you think that's going to be the likely compromise that we see out of these talks that have been happening between uh, Treasury and the other regulators with these investment funds, something well, like that? Well, look, we're, we're continuing to talk to them and uh, we'll do so over, over the coming days to try and come up with, with, with some solutions. But what we can't do is, is guaranteed market-based uh, Schemes. I mean, there is a real difference between where you have physical deposits that are in a bank uh, as, as against uh, guaranteeing a market performance. That's something that uh, not even Malcolm in his many, uh, many attempts at, uh, at uh, different solutions has even proposed. So no one's really proposing that, uh, but we, we will be looking at everything that we can do in terms of uh, trying to, to, to reach some agreement that uh, can, can assist these people. But, but the thing, Craig, is we wouldn't be in this mess in the first place had, had Kevin Rudd uh, taken Malcolm Turnbull into his confidence and said, look, uh, this is the right way to go. Have a cap uh, on, on, uh, on the funds available. Uh, don't make it unlimited. 
Uh, eventually did lessen, but uh, well, that, well, that's Michael, a few weeks later. Uh, Michael, as you know, we, we, <laughs> we had the position from, from, from Malcolm, first of all, saying there should be a cap of 100,000, then supporting the government's position, then saying we should take the RBA's advice, then when he hears the advice that we get, saying we don't like that advice. I think it was 20,000 I mean, uh, for a start. I mean, uh, the, yeah, yeah, the, the, the Liberal proposing. Party have been all over the place in terms of the bank deposits. They haven't had a firm position. And I think what Australians want was decisive action, but also consistency in relation to the approach that's taken. And that's, that's the position that we've taken in terms of this issue. Okay, well, despite these economic woes, the latest news poll out today shows it's not all doom and gloom for the government. Last month, Malcolm Turnbull was perceived by voters to be the best person able to handle the economy. Now, that's switched around quite, quite dramatically. Malcolm Turnbull's also dropped further behind Kevin Rudd as preferred Prime Minister. Michael Johnson, the voters at least, the people who count, seem to be pretty impressed with the way the government's handling this crisis overall. Well, uh, Kevin Rudd is the Prime Minister. He's got his hands on the wheels. He's got his hands on the Australian taxpayers' uh, funds. Uh, and let's not forget, he played uh, Santa Claus. He's just handed out uh, $10.4 billion of uh, government money, which actually, thanks to the Howard Costello administration, uh, put the Rudd government in a position where they could, where they could actually stimulate the economy. So you support oh, I mean, let's just imagine our position in terms let's, of that, did you, Michael? Let's absolutely, we have supported well, the position. Great. That's good. Um, and then you keep on moving the goalposts. Um, but the important thing is, can you just imagine for a moment that uh, that the government didn't have this cash available? Imagine, imagine if we had a deficit. Uh, what would be the Rudd government's options today? I mean, we would be a real dog's breakfast, even more so than we are now. Well, we, we well this poll also, Craig Thompson, shows that uh, more voters want a delay of the emissions trading scheme because of this financial crisis. It's quite a shift in, in attitude just in the last month or so. Well, look, uh, the, the position in relation to the emissions trading scheme is that uh, it, inaction is going to cost us more than, than, than action. And uh, we, we need to be continuing to, to, to move ahead. If anything, the economic crisis uh, tells us that uh, uh, we need to, to be moving decisively and that the plans that we have in terms of the emissions trading scheme need, need to continue. That, and that's for economic reasons as much as anything else. But Craig, the number of people outright opposed to this scheme now has doubled to 21%. Yes, and you, you, we still have, you know, the vast majority of Australians uh, understand that uh, we need to have an emissions trading scheme. Uh, it's, it's something that, uh, that they understand that by doing nothing, we're going to be in a worse position than doing something about. So this is something that, that, that hasn't changed. We need to continue uh, with our plans in relation to, to this. Uh, look, polls come and go. Uh, what people are really concerned about at the moment is, uh, is, uh, is making sure that their government acts decisively, their government uh, is consistent in their approach, and that's something that the Rudd government has done, and uh, whereas we have uh, flip-flop Malcolm Turnbull uh, moving around all over the place on pretty much every issue, and, uh, and you know, the, the, what they're... Acting decisively, what, what, what you're, you're about to put it back. What, what they're <laughs> after is, uh, is the kind of leadership that, uh, the, uh, the, that Kevin Rudd has shown. Well, Michael Johnson, you've got one of the youngest electorates in the company in the country. This poll showed the largest group of people who want the scheme delayed are in that 18 to 34 age bracket. Is that surprising to you? Look, it's not actually. Uh, this squares with my own phone calls, my own uh, contact with, with the constituents in my in my Ryan electorate. Uh, I have the University of Queensland in the western suburbs of Brisbane in St Lucia, so that does, I, think, I guess, bring the age age down, the mean age down. Uh, and I'm not at all surprised uh, that that this poll uh, has come out as a has. Um, look, the Rudd government is not going to implement the ETS in this parliamentary term. Um, beyond the, the confines of an election campaign where you know, people were able to be seduced by the Rudd rhetoric. I'm not sure um, actually whether we're getting uh, another un position here from the Liberal Party. Yeah. is going to go up uh, and the Rudd government's got to have its eyes on the economy. Uh, and let me make this prediction that in this parliament, uh, the Rudd government won't be bringing forward the ETS. Uh, so it's a funny, uh, I'm not sure what Craig's definition of uh, instant and decisive is, but it won't be in this parliament. They know too well that if jobless figures go up, uh, you know, we have 10, 15 percent uh, unemployment rates. There's no way that we'll be able to make our contribution to well, the well, climate actually, change issue. What we're seeing here is another example of the flip-flop of the Liberal Party. Sometimes when it's popular to support uh, uh, the, uh, the emissions trading, they'll do so. When it's not, they won't. I mean, no, Malcolm, we actually support Malcolm, Malcolm it. Someone, we support it. Malcolm Turnbull is someone who'd wear two football jumpers to a football game just so he can back the winning side. And that's what we see with the policy decisions that uh, the Liberal Party make all the time. OK, well, Labor backbencher Craig Thompson and Liberal backbencher Michael Johnson, we have run out of time. Thank you for joining us on AM Agenda this morning. Thank Thanks, you. Ashley.
Don't forget to join David Spears from Washington and Kieran Gilbert, who will be here in Canberra this afternoon at 4.15 Eastern Daylight Time for PM Agenda. I'll be back with AM Agenda tomorrow morning. For now, I'm Ashley Gillen. Thanks for your company.